Hi, my name is Rick Morgan. I'm with Comic Book Science, and we are going to just show you how to get rid of some spine roll in a book. So this book here has, by the way, my videographer is Nolan here. If we look, there's some yeah. pretty serious spine roll. This is like as bad as it gets in this Lois Lane book from uh, 1963. And so we are going to flatten it out, and then we are going to... We first must undo that damage, which we have done. There's a missing piece of page here, but this will be a good experiment. So we are going to first steam it, and then we're going to press it flat, and then we're going to give it a new lease on life. Stop. All right, so the, some of the tasks are to find the middle page, and in this case, it's actually kind of hard. It looks like the stables have been pulled out of it, but it's right here. You, can't, you can barely see it. There, This is so badly done that it's hard to see. But we're going to go ahead and steam this book with our trusty steamer here. And we're gonna get the edges nice, moist. We're gonna get the paper moist, nice and relaxed. Get the cover moist. Okay, a little bit of moisture on all the pages, especially the ones that have that big crease in them. Good job, Nolan. Gotta capture every bit of this. And these pages have got to wrinkle before we're ready, really ready to do this well and here we go nice and steamy hot you just got to be almost heavy with with um, moisture for this to work properly yeah. and then well, look at that there we go get those wrinkles out of there I'm just make all these videos just like in one room basically yeah I don't think one. you've made a single video outside of this room well you haven't seen the ones I made at my work Oh, yeah. Um, then we put this sucker down here, and we pull this metal so it comes off the edge front a little bit, so that it's... Don't touch it. It's 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it's going to get hotter than that. And then what we do is, see this wrinkle here, Nolan? Where's it Celsius? We take this, we take a very stiff board, which Daddy has some Daddy. over here, and we're going to push it down on top of this, right, so that we push it flat so we know where it's going push it flat there and then we put this piece of metal on top of it for even pressure and it's not going to get the whole book we're not it's not our goal we're just going to flatten this sucker out and then we're going to make it hotter than it is now we're going to push it onto here a little more it's so we're looking up here so we know it's flat right yeah push that sucker down just push it and then we're going to go up so this is a silver age book so we're going to go to 167 167 we're going to let the viewers read that yeah and then when it gets there, we're going to give it 600 seconds. Uh, can't, they can't really see that. It's a little well, bit too once it gets there, We'll go 600 seconds, and then we're going to let it sit there for eight hours. So the book is completely smashed flat. Wait, eight hours? Yep, we'll let it over, over, sit overnight. Uh, then we're going to reform but, the spine. Um, wait, eight hours, but you're not supposed to leave the machine unattended while in use. Well, eight hours at ambient temperature, not not heated temperature. So that's okay. How come how come the rules aren't like, ever explained specifically? Well, they assume that you're not a dummy. <laughs> 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 this idea is just it, all these videos are just turning into a, a, a happy fun land because of me. You are you are a fun happy guy. All right, we're done. Put your hand pushed out. We'll okay. So here we go. I get the, so some people put these things in a humidity chamber to help fold them, but I just let it get up to about 100 degrees on the surface temperature here. And then I hold that for about 10 seconds. So the book gets a little warm. It's pretty pliable if you steam it well first. There we go. I'll stop that. The book will be a little bit toasty now, but not really bad. Panel is hot. Then I'm going to take this. So now the book is flattenized pretty well. It's pretty flat. So it's not super flat, but it's better than it was. So we are going to um, fold it now. I have to find the middle page, which is hard to do in this book because the staples are pretty withdrawn. I think that's not it. It is right. There we go. This is the page right here. So now what we're going to do is 
line up something, this thick, super thick board, on these staples. And then what we're going to do here is we are going to form this new spine around this guy here. I'm just pinching it with my hands. And then I take one of these guys and I'll hold it in place with this. And then what I'm going to do is steam it again on just the end here. This will be, there'll be three total pressings in this, this book here. I'll shut this light off so you can see better. There'll be three total pressings. This is going to get some moisture in it here. So it takes the new crease well. Then what I do is I'm going to push this so the, if you look in the front here, you'll see that my, I have a lip on the front of my bottom steel plate. That's specifically for this purpose. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit even more. And then I'm going to lay this thing flat on it like that. And then we are going to put another thick board on top, kind of at an angle. Like that. You can see that. It's gonna make, it's gonna take some of the angling out of this guy a little bit here. And then we're not gonna put another, uh, another hot panel on top of it. I don't think we could, but I don't really want, I don't, I don't like to do it this way. It makes a little, it makes a line here. So then push this guy down and it gives us a new crease. We're gonna do this again. And then we take that up to 167. Let it sit for a long time. And these pages are not lined up perfectly. That's okay, they won't be. We could trim them, but we don't want to do a restoration on it. You can't trim all the pages the same way if you're going to um, end up getting it graded. You have to use a, a, a laser cutter and cut it with a laser. Put a piece of plastic on top and cut through the plastic so it takes a lot of the energy out. And then have the pages not be lined up perfectly. The laser cutter will diffract enough that it goes and cuts all the pages just a little bit differently so that a grader can't tell the difference. If you just use a blade, then um, it's pretty easy to tell. You trim it, but with a laser, you can literally take like hundreds of a millimeter off, and then um, they really can't tell. They think they can tell, but there's no difference between that and like misprinting the cover, so they don't really know. Um, well, we'll come back a little bit and see how it looks. All right, well, let's see what this looks like. We've got to... We'll have a, not a very good crease, most likely. Kind of a, a poor crease in here. And then we'll, um, look at, we actually took a lot of dirt <laughs> out of the cover. Interesting. Um, so it's gonna be a poor, a poor crease. So the, uh, the guys at the archival place will tell you to do the bone folder and like crease it with that um, directly, but I don't do that. So what I do is I take this out of the middle now and then I use this on the edge and I use a sharpie and I just rub it along this paper like that and then that'll put a crease in it without hurting the paper especially if it's older marble paper and then um, if it doesn't look like it's taken any damage you can run your uh, you can softly run your imitation bone folder here on this guy and just use a sharpie pen and that's if it looks like it's in a good spot and it does these need to be clean so we'll we'll have to remove those staples and clean them but now we're finally ready to it's, it's not really well aligned but we're finally ready to wash it with some water and some soap and then we'll press it for good and we'll see what happens so we washed a little bit and if you're curious um can't tell, like, tell them this light. I'll turn this light off. Um, this is how much dirt came off of the front cover of that book. And that was just a really light cleaning. I didn't do much to it, but it, it was massively dirty. And it doesn't look like much now. It's all wet and dark and wrinkled. But I promise you, it'll look a lot smoother and shinier for the cleaning. Um, you couldn't really notice that dirt, but it will definitely look uh, like kind of flatter. And 
dare say more glossy when we're done with it. So I warmed up this um, pad a little bit here. We're just gonna get it warm just a little. And we're gonna pull the top up and let it dry. Just do this a couple times and just let it get dry to the touch so it doesn't stick to the, the uh, silicone sheet. We're just gonna drive a little bit of that excess moisture out of there. Yeah, okay, it's getting there. So, oh, oh, it's not quite there. It's not quite there. Come on, baby. A little more. Let's slide this back. All right, you're almost there, though. Here, just let that, just kind of warming it up. There we go. That's better. That's the feeling we want. Even feels better now. Feels nice and smooth. So I'm gonna put a piece of silicone on top of it. Sheet, and we're gonna put the thick 56 point thick backing board on top of that. And we're gonna put a sheet of steel on top of that. And we're gonna smash the whole thing. And away we go. We will see what it looks like uh, tomorrow. I'll let this sit overnight and I'm gonna have to cold press it for probably another day or maybe two days after that um, just to keep that, we wanna keep that spine uh, folded and we'll see what it looks like. Should look quite a bit better, I suspect. Sorry, one last thing. I wanted to show you that if you don't wanna to go to the trouble of taking a staple out of something, but you wanna get some of the rust off of it, make it look just a little bit better, just take a little a Q tip here and you kind of pinch the book and you rest the pre-tip and just slightly go back and forth. You don't have to do this a lot of times. But it'll start to come slowly cleaner. It won't look great, but um, but if you can see, I don't know where the lens is, this thing is, you can see that I'm getting a lot of rust off there. And uh, it'll look a little better. It won't look great. But on first glance, it'll look smoother. And this one, I, don't, I can hardly even tell actually that it's been done. But if you do this for a long time, it'll look better. Actually, what really works is a bounty dryer sheet. If you put that on the Q-tip, it works pretty well. Yeah, this stuff too gets uh, some off of there. So yeah, these look. I don't know. It's hard to say they look better, but they, yeah, not that is bad. I, I'll I'll come back and do it later. I don't want to bore you guys. I can't. It'll take me probably half an hour rubbing that thing to make it look a lot better. So here we are, uh, almost done. Did another a wipe down with water, a cold press under some under a weight, and let's see what it looks like now. And it looks pretty good, I'd say. Definitely better. And you can see, if you get it right in the right light, you can see that there's a little bit of a gloss to it now. Especially look at the lowest lane, look at the red right there. You can really see it. It's a lot shinier than it was before. I mean, it's not shiny by any stretch of the imagination, but it looks better. Uh, the staples here, you can't see them, but they had some rust on them, but they're um, the middle of it is shinier than it was, although it's hard to discern. There, right there, you can see how it's not all rusty. And, um, and that's it. And the spine is a lot straighter than it was. It could be, we could have done a better job, but it's not bad. It's, it looks better. Um, it smells a little moldy. Um, I might do an ozone treatment on it. Take it rid of that mildewy smell. I'm building a new ozone box, so we'll see how that goes in the future. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.